The Moorland Flower by Edwin Waugh Beneath a crag whose forehead rude Or frowns the mountain side, Stern monarch of the solitude, Dark heaving, wild and wide, A floweret of the moorland hill Peeped out unto the sun, In a mossy nook where a limpid rill Came tinkling blithely by, Like a star seed from the night skies flung, Upon the mountains lone, Into a gleaming floweret sprung, Amid the wild it shone, And bush and briar and rock and rill, And every wandering wind, In interchange of sweet good will, A mutual love did bind. In the gloaming grey at close of day, Beneath the deepening blue, It lifted up its little cup, To catch the evening dew. The rippling fall, the moor fowls call, the wandering night winds moan, It heard, it felt, it loved them all, That floweret sweet and lone. The green fern wove a screening grove, From noontide's fervid ray, The pearly mist of the brooklet kissed, Its leaves with cooling spray, And when dark tempest swept the waste, And north winds whistled wild, The brave old rock kept off the shock, As a mother shields her child. And when it died the south wind sighed, The drooping fern looked dim, The old crag moaned, the lone ash groaned, The wild heath sang a hymn. The leaves crept near, though fallen and sere, Like old friends mustering round, And the dewdrop fell from the heather bell Upon its burial ground. For it had bloomed content to bless Each thing that round it grew, And on its native wilderness its store of sweetness drew, Fair link in nature's chain of love, To noisy fame unknown, There is a register above, Even when a flower is gone. So lovingly embrace thy lot, Though lowly it may be, And beautify the little spot, Where God hath planted thee, To win the world's approving eyes, Make thou no foolish haste, Heaven loves the heart that lives and dies to bless its neighbouring waste. The Captain's Friends by Edwin Waugh I wandered down by yonder park one quiet autumn day, when many a humble traveller was going on the way, and there I saw a company of neighbours great and small, all gathered round an ancient gate that leads unto the hall. The faded leaves that rustled in the mournful autumn wind Awoke in me a train of thought that saddened all my mind And through the crowd of anxious folk there went a whispered wail So I sat me down upon a stone and hearkened to the tale The sturdy farmer from his fields had hurried to the place The cripple on his crutches and the sick with pallid face The poor old dame had wandered with her blind man to the ground, And the lonely widow weeping With her children gathered round. The well-remembered beggar too was there, But not to beg, And the stiff old Chelsea pensioner Upon his wooden leg. From hamlet fold and lonely cot, The humble poor were there, Each bringing in his moistened eye A tributary tear. Up spake the sturdy farmer To the porter, and he said, what news is this that's going round? They say the captain's dead. The quaint old porter laughed. Aha! Thank God it isn't true. It's but the captain's dog that's dead. They called it Captain Two. Then sprang the cripple on his crutch and nearly came to ground. The blind man wandered to and fro and shook their hands all round. The dame took snuff, the sick man smiled and blessed the happy day. And the widow kissed her young ones As she wiped her tears away. Up rose the children's voices, Mingling music with the gale, And the beggar's dog romped with them As he barked and wagged his tail. The farmer snapped his thumbs and cried, Come on, I'll feast you all. And the stark old soldier with his stick Kept charging at the wall. So now the captain's dog is dead And sleeping in the ground, A kind old master by the grave, Bemoans his gallant hound. He says, My hair is white and thin, I have not long to stay. And oh, my poor old dog, How I shall miss thee on the way. 
Then here's to every noble heart that's gentle, just and brave, that cannot be a tyrant, and that grieves to see a slave. God save that good old captain long, and bring his soul to joy. The countryside will lose a friend the day he comes to die. Christmas Morning by Edwin War Come all you weary wanderers beneath the wintry sky, this day forget your worldly cares and lay your sorrows by. Awake and sing the church bells ring, for this is Christmas morning. With grateful hearts salute the morn and swell the streams of song, that laden with great joy are born, the willing air along. The tidings thrill with right good will, for this is Christmas morning. We'll twine the fresh green holly wreath to make the yule log glow, and gather gaily underneath the winking mistletoe, all blithe and bright by the glad firelight, for this is Christmas morning. Come sing the carols old and true, that mind is of good cheer, and like a heavenly fall of dew, revive the drooping year, and fill us up a wassail cup, for this is Christmas morning. To all poor souls we'll strew the feast, with willing heart and free, one father owns us, and at least today will brothers be. Away with pride, this holy tide, for it is Christmas morning. So now God bless us one and all, with hearts and our stones warm, and may he prosper great and small, and keep us out of harm, and teach us still his sweet good will, this merry Christmas morning. Time is Flying by Edwin Waugh Time is flying, how we hying, to a brighter, better born, or unthinking, daily singing, into night that knows not morn. Oh, what is life but duty strife, a drill, a watchful sentry's round, a brief campaign for deathless gain, a bivouac on battleground, an arrow's flight to taper's light, a fitful day of sun and cloud, a flower, a shade, a journey made, between a cradle and a shroud, Oh, what is death, a swordless sheath, a jubilee, a mother's call, a kindly breast that offers rest unto the poorest of us all. The wretched's friend, oppression's end, the outcast shelter from the cold, to regions dim, the portal grim, where misers leave their loads of gold. A voyage o'er a misty shore, with time wreck generations strewn, where each mad age has spent its rage, Upon a continent unknown. Keen blows the north wind by Edwin War. Keen blows the north wind, the woodlands are bare, the snow shroud lies white on the flowerless lea, the redbreast is wailing the death of the year as he cowers his wing in the frozen hoar tree. The leaves of the forest, now summer is o'er, lie softly asleep in the lap of decay. And the wildflower rests on the snow-covered shore, Till the cold night of winter has wandered away. Oh, where are the small birds that sang in yon bowers, When last summer smiled on the green mantle plain? Oh, where do they shelter in winter's bleak hours? Will they come back with spring to delight me again? But I may be gone, never more to be old, The wildflowers peep when the winter has fled. The chill drifts of sorrow the wanderer may fold, And the sunshine of spring melt the snow on his bed. But come ye sweet marblers, and sport in the spray, Whose tender revival I never may see. The young buds will leap to your welcoming lay, T'will cheer the sad-hearted, as oft it cheered me. And should ye, returning, then find me at rest, Stay sometimes and sing near the grave of a friend, Drop a rosemary leaf on his turf-covered breast, And rejoice that his troublesome journeys attend. Life's Twilight by Edwin War Now silver threads begin to shine among my wasting hair, And down the slope of life's decline I thoughtfully repair. The fire that once was in mine eyes has dimmed its fervid ray, and every hour of life that flies is stealing light away. Oh, let me with untroubled breast a while in shadow lie, 
before I lay me down to rest and bid the world good bye. With time that wrestler old and grim I've had a gallant round, but ah, there's little chance with him who bringeth all to ground. Although the world still rolleth on its merry motley way, my little part of life is done except to watch the play. Then let me with untroubled breast a while in shadow lie, before I lay me down to rest and bid the world good bye. In youth to pleasure's lightest troll, my heart leap blithe and free, now she may play what tune she will, it is not so with me. For though a smile may sometimes steal across my furrowed brow, my joys are all akin I feel to contemplation now. Then let me with untroubled breast a while in shadow lie, before I lay me down to rest, and bid the world good-bye. Chirrup by Edwin Waugh Young Chirrup were a metal cout, his heart and limbs were true, at foot race or at rustling bout, or aught he buckled to, at work our play reeked gallantly, he laid into his game, and he were very fond of singing brids, that's how he get his name. He was straight as any picking rod, and limber as a snake, he were the artist cock at village clod, at every country rig. His shining in were clear and blue, his face were frank and bold, and the year about his monly brew were crisped in curls a gown. Young Chirrup donned his clinkered shoon, and started off to fair. He swore by late at Thaviz Moon he'd have a mow up there. He pooed a sprig from Thawthorn tree that blossomed by the way. If any man says wrong to me, I'll tan his eye today. Full soul in money a lass would sigh that chanced to wander near, and peep into his e'en to spy if love were lurking there. So fair and free he stepped at green, and trolling out his song, well, eat some out and twinkling in, went chirruping along. Young chirrup wooed a village maid, and who were the flower of all, with kisses kind in woodland shade, and whispers soft and low. He mat his ear to the sweetest chime that ever mortal sung, and mat his heart beat pleasant time to the music of his tongue. Oh, the kindest mates this world within, one had their share of pain, but if this pair could life begin, they'd buckle to again. For though he were hearty, blunt and tough, and matty, sweet and mild, for three score year through smooth and rough, who led him like a child. The Dell in this bonnet of mine, by Edwin Waugh. It should be pointed out that the Dell is Lancashire dialect for the devil. The dell in this bonnet of mine, my ribbons'll never be reaped. Eh, Molly, I'm like to be fine, for Jamie'll be coming to me. He met me in Clane t'other day, I were going for waiter to well, and he begged that I'd wed him in May. By the mass, if he'll let me, I will. When he took my two elms into his, good Lord, how they trembled between, and I durstn't look up in his face. Because on him seeing me in, my cheek went as red as a rose. There's never a mortal can tell how happy I felt for the nose. One couldn't ask him thyself. But the tail were at tender me tongue to let it out wouldn't be right, for I thought to seem forward were wrong. So I told him I'd tell him to me. But Mally, thou knows very well, though it isn't a thing one should own. If I'd the pike in at will to myself, I'd either had Jamie or no one. Now, Molly, I've told thee thy mind, what would to do if to a thee? I'd tack him just while he were inclined, and apparently bargain he'll be, for Jamie's as grandly a lad as ever stepped out into the sun. Go jump at thy chance and get wed, and mat the best of the job when it's done. He dear, but it's time to be going. I shouldn't like Jamie to wait. I couldn't for shame be too soon, and I wouldn't for world be too late. I'm all of a tremble to thiel. Just think of me bonnet'll do. Be off, lass, thou looks very well. He wants no another bonnet, thy fool. 
Owd Pinder by Edwin Waugh Owd Pinder were a rackless foo, And spent his days in spreein, At the end of every drinking do, He was sure to crack a deen. Go sell me rags and sell me shoon, I's never lived to trail em, Me bally's pipes are out to tune, And the wimp begins to fail em. Ah, Matt is very fresh and young, T'would any mum bewilder, He'll wed again afore it's long, For at last he's fond of childer. My bait a brass'll fly and see, When the coffin lid is screamy, It goes again me pluck to dee, And leave her wit behind me. Come Matty, come and kill me head, I'm finished to me thinking. Who wrapped him nicely up and said, It's no tint will but drinking. Nay, nay, said he, me fuddle's done, We're parting one from t'other, So promise me that when I'm gone, They'll never wed another. Thou tail, said who, and left a stew, It's really past believing, They think o' will when that going to, And leaving this world to living. What used to make and dried folk be, Thou's killed thyself with spreein, And if that's all the wants we me, Get forward with the deein. He scratched his head, he rubbed his ee, And then he donned his breeches. And Matty gets as foul said he, As one at Pendle witches. If ever I'm to muster wit, It mun be now or never, I think I'll try to live a bit, It wanna do to leave her. God Bless These Poor Folk By Edwin War God bless these poor folk that are striving, by means that are honest and true, For summat to keep em alive in, This world that we're scrambling through, As the life of a mon's full of feeting, A mortal that wants to do fair, Should never be grudged of his eating, For thardest that battles his share. This world's kin to trouble, ain't best on it, There's money sad changes come round, We wander about to find rest on it, And the worm yammers for us ain't ground. May he that'll work while he's able, Be never long hungry nor dry, And the children sit at his table, God bless em with plenty, says I. And he that can feel it a pleasure, To lead to misfortune and pain, May his pantry be ours full measure, To cut at and come to again. May God bless his cup and his cupboard, A thousand for one that he gives, And his heart be a bumper of comfort, to the very last minute he lives. And he that scorns ale to his victual, Is welcome to let it alone. There's some can be wise with a little, And some that are foolish with no one. And some are so queer in their nature, That not with their stomachs agree. But he that would liefer drink water, Shall never be stinted by me. One likes to see hearty folk working, And weary folk having a rest, one likes to hear poor women singing, to little things laid on their breast. Good cooks are my favourite doctors, good livers my parson shall be, and any poor creature that's clemming may come have a mouthful with me. How time is a troublesome codger, keeps nudging us on to decay, and whispers you know but a lodger, get ready for going away. Then let's an a skulk in the snivelling, Whatever misfortunes before, God bless him that fends for his living, And owds up his yed through it all. As the life of a mon's full of feeting, A mortal that wants to do fair, Should never be grudged of his eating, For thardest that battles his share. Come, Mary, link thy arm in mine, Come, Mary, link thy arm in mine, And lilt away with me, And dry that trembling drop of brine From the corner of thee. Thou knows that got a side at spring, Come, lass, and live with me, I'll buy thou the prettiest golden ring That ever thou did see. Come, Mary, link thy arm in mine, And lilt away with me, And dry that trembling drop of brine from the corner of thee. My father's gone me forty pound, In silver and in goud, And a bonny bit of garden ground, Oth morning side at foud, 
An handsome Bible, clean and new, to read for days to come. There's leaves for writing names in two, like thousand at so home. Come, Mary, link thy arm in mine, and lilt away with me, and dry that trembling drop of brine from the corner of the ye. Our Jenny's been a buying in, and every day who brings knives and forks and pots and irons for smoothing caps and things. My granny's sent a kiss to draws, Sunday clothes to keep, and little Fanny's bought a glass where they and me can peep. Come, Mary, link thy arm in mine, and lilt away with me, and dry that trembling drop of brine from the corner of the ye. Our tumbers sent a bacon flitch, our gem a load of coals, our Charlie's bought some pictures, and he's hanged em up on walls. Our posies whitewashed cottage through, our matties made it sweet, and Jack scammed me his jam and flute to play by fire at night. Come, Mary, link thy arm in mine, and lilt away with me, and dry that trembling drop of brine from the corner of the ye. There's cups and saucers, porridge, ponds, and tables, great and small. There's brushes, mugs, and lading cans, an eight days clock and all. There's a cheer for thee, and one for me, and one in every nook. Thy mother has a cushion on it, it's the nicest chair in rook. Come, Mary, link thy arm in mine, and lilt away with me, and dry that trembling drop of brine from the corner of the ye. My mother's gam me the four-post bed, with curtains to it and all, and pillars, sheets, and bowsters too, as white as driven snow. It isn't stuffed with feather down, but the flocks are clean and new, who says there's honest folk in town that's made a worse and do. Come, Mary, link thy arm in mine, and lilt away with me, and dry that trembling drop of brine from the corner of the ye. I peeked into me cot last night, it made me utch in fain, a bonny fire were winking bright in every wind of pain. A marlet upon the white house stone, and drummed on kettle lead, and sung my nest is snug and sweet, I'll go and fotch my bread. Come, Mary, link thy arm in mine, and lilt away with me, and dry that trembling drop of brine from the corner of the ye. Thou knows that cot aside at spring, come lass and live with me, I'll buy thou the prettiest golden ring that ever thou did see. Bread, dear reader, is Lancashire dialect for bird, and also a term of affection. The Sweetheart Gate by Edwin War All this money a gate out to our town end, but no but one for me. It winds by a rindling waterside, and o'er a posied lee. It wanders into a shady dell, and when I've done for day, oh, I never can saddle this heart of mine, about walking down that way. It's neither garden nor posied lee, nor water rindling clear, but down it vale there's a rosy nook, and my true love lives there. It's always summer where thart's content, the wintry winds may blow, and there's never a gate that's a kind to foot, as the gate one likes to go. When I set off a sweetheart in, I've a thousand things to say, but the very first glance of yon chimbley top, it drives them all away. And when I meet with me bonny lass, it sets me out a gee. Oh, there's summer in the leet of yon two bluey in, that plays the deal with me. When Thlaycrox finished his wark a bun, and laid his music by, he flutters down to his mates and stops, till daily stirs in sky. Though Matty sends me away at dark, I know that who's reap full well, and it's how I love a true-hearted lass no mortal tongue can tell. I wish that Candlemas day were past, when waking time comes on, and I wish that Kesmas time was here, and Matty and me were one. I wish this wandering wark were o'er, this maundering to and fro, 
that I could go home to my own true love and stop at knee and all. Readers will no doubt be interested to know that in Lancashire dialect, a gate simply means a way or road, the lay rock is a skylark, and Kesmus is of course Christmas. Nightfall by Edwin Waugh the wind blows keen through shivering thorns, and the leaf looks wild in sky. Come tat, stir up that fire and draw, that cather gently by. I've done me washing, granny, and I've tidied everything. So now I'll sit me down to sow, and I can take cattle sing. Bring in some coals and shut that door, it's quite a wintry day. Reach down that tam, our robin likes a relish to his tay. Sweep the grate and set this table out, put the tape pot upon thoven. It's getting on for bagging time, and he'll be coming soon. The fire brums clear and the house begins, a looking brisk and bree, as time draws near when he gets back from town at Thedgeny. It makes one much wiggly to year, a favourite food come home, and it's very fine to argue when one knows it's sure to come. The cat pricks up her ears at snack, with money a leaksome toot, and throw down chair in corner seems, as if it yeared his foot. The window blinks and the clock begins, a ticking loud and fain, and the tin things winking upon the wall, they groan as bright again. The cattle's humming o'er with fun, just look at Thandert's spout, it's like some little sooty lad, that set his lips to shout. The waiter drops a foin from the tap, a getting wick wiggly, and you're fain, granny too, I know, but no one as fain as me. Keep the rockers going soft and slow, and shade that leet away. I think this little duck's on mend, who sleeps so well today. Doze on me, darling, keep em shut, those teeny windows blue. Good Lord, if aught should happen thee, what? Could thy mother do? Here, Granny, put this cover on, And tuck it nicely in, Keep the cather stirring gently, And make very little din, And lap those dimpled ons away, From the frosty winter air, They line a top a bit of quilt, Like two clock on was there, But stop who's laughing, Come I up, my bonny little puss, God bless it, that is no one far off, let Mammy have a bus. He's here, he's here. Tet, bring that cheer. He dear these darlings too. If it were not for this child to name, what could a body do? For the reader's information, a cather is a cradle, and a bus is a kiss. How do you not? By Edwin Waugh. How do you not get dance like his pipe down on thob? And his thin fingers played in the white thatch of his knob. I'm getting done up to there, Betty, he said. Just think that could doff me and dab me to bed. Then who get him to bed and who apt him up well? And who said to him, Enoch, lad, how does to feel? These limbs of mine, Betty, they cranky and sore. It's time to shut up when one's getting four score. As who potters about his poor winterly pate, Thou fellow look drowsily up at his mate. There's no on me left, Betty, do what thou can, With a cratchly frame of what once were a mon. Then he turned himself o'er like a child tied with play, And Betty crept round while they were dozing away. As his eyelids sank down, thou lad whispered, Well done, I think there's a bit of sound sleep coming on. Then who thought who'd sit by till he'd had his nap o'er? If who'd sit there till then who'd a risen no more, For he cooled out to the world and his e'en lost their leap, As quiet as a cinder in fire grate at night. As Betty sat rocking bit side of his bed, Who looked now and then a towdy knots white yet, And who thought to herself that who'd not long to stay, If ever thou prop of her life shall give way. Then wondering to see him so sound and so still, who touched Enoch's hand, and who found it were chill. Says Betty, he's cowed, I'll put summat more on, 
for it were no use for how Enoch were gone. And when they put Enoch to bed in the ground, a rook of poor neighbours stood bareheaded around. They dropped sprigs of rosemary, and this were their text, Thou craters lied by, we may aptly bit next. So Betty were left to tour on by herself, and how who pooed through it no mortal can tell. But the doctor dropped in to look at her one day, when they were rocking the back side of an odd cup of tea. Well, Betty, said Doctor, how done you get on? I'm sorry to hear it you and lost your own man. What complaint had he, Betty? Says who, I can't tell. We ne'er had no doctor, he deed of his cell. Ay, Betty, said Doctor, there's one thing quite sure. Out age is a thing that no physic can cure. Fate will have her way, lass, do all that we can. When the time comes up, we have to sign o'er and be gone. Both winter and summer thou mowers at work, siding folk out to seat, both be dealy and dark. He's slaving away while we're snoring in bed, and he's slash at a king if it come in his yet. These soldiers and parsons and mices are land, he lays em in ground with our mouths full of sun. Rags of riches and our greasy cap are a crown, he serves all alike for he switches em down. The mon that's learnt up and the mon that's a fool, it makes little odds for they and both had to go. When they come in within swing of his scythe they mon fall. If you root amongst swath, you'll find doctors and all.